Hi. Let's talk some Pearl. Now last time we talked about Bowman Jacobini's structured theorem. The structured theorem suggests that any problem can be solved by using a combination of sequential steps, selection, making alternate paths, and iteration, repeating things over and over again. Our previous program was a very simple payroll calculation that simply took in an hourly rate and hours worked, multiplied the two, called it gross, and printed it out. Now, it is an oversimplification. I took that program and edited it so that it would figure out overtime pay. And here it is. The first thing that we're doing is we're printing out a message that we're going to calculate payroll. And then we print a prompt for an hourly pay rate. Then we declare a scalar variable called rate. And we get some data from our keyboard and put it into rate. Now, remember, if I'm going to type data from the keyboard, the only way I have of getting it into the computer's memory is to hit the return key, which may be labeled enter on your keyboard. But in essence, it creates a carriage return. Now, that carriage return is part of the rate, so we need to get rid of it. And that is the purpose of the chomp function. So when I chomp rate, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of that backslash n at the end of it. So it's just the pure data that I intended to type in. Okay? Then we print out a prompt for the hours. And here we are declaring a new variable called hours, getting data from the keyboard again, placing it in hours, and then chopping it all in one line. Now, here's where things begin to get interesting. Right here is all of the logic that I need to determine whether or not overtime hours were worked and if they were to figure out what the overtime premium ought to be. Now remember, standard overtime premiums are 50% of your base pay rate. So if I worked 10 hours overtime and my pay rate was $5 an hour, it'd be my gross on that would be 50, but I won't get a 50% premium. So I don't get $50 more, I get $25 more. Okay? So, the if then else begins with the word if. It is followed by a condition we wish to test in parentheses. The condition we want to test is, is the value of ours greater than 40? Okay? Now, actually, there is no word then in an if-then-else coded in Perl. So the then is implied. So what do we do when the condition is true? Well, we take those statements and list them right after the condition, but we enclose them into curly brackets. There's only one thing that we want to do when the condition is true. We declare a new scalar variable called premium. And then we have this computation that results in premium's value. And the calculation is hours minus 40. 
So we're just getting the hours over 40. We're multiplying that by the pay rate and dividing the result by 2. And then we store that value into premium. So in our example, if I work 50 hours, minus 40 is 10. Now the, we're not changing the value of hours here. We're just getting a temporary value of 10. Multiplied by the rate, 5, we'd have 50. Divided by the 2 would be 25. We take the 25 and store it into premium. Well, what happens when my condition is not true? Well, that's where else comes in. Else says, do the statements that follow when my condition is false. So if hours are not greater than 40, we do whatever statement or statements follow else and are enclosed within the curly brackets. In this case, we simply set the value of premium to zero. Okay, so now we've got an overtime premium. Our only other change was to add that premium to our computation. So gross is still equal to hours times rate with the addition of our premium. And then we print out our gross. Now let's go over to the right and let's test our program. Okay, now I'm going to keep things very simple. I'm going to say my pay rate is $10 and I worked 20 hours. So I do not have overtime. My gross pay should be 200 and it is. Let's do it again. This time with overtime. 10 hours and I worked 60 hours. My gross pay is 700. Now if you think about it, I have 20 hours overtime times the $10 would be 200 divided by 2 would be 100. So I have a $100 overtime premium added to 60 times 10. So 600 plus 100 is 700. Our logic works. And that's it for today. Remember to practice this on your own.